Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to our webinar today. I'm Josh Rodriguez. I'm the Digital Strategy Manager here at Hapara. And I'm joined by Robin Poncia, who's the VP of Marketing Professional Learning here at Hapara. Uh, Robin today is going to walk through um, her experience in working with Hapara and go over a high level view of classroom workflows. So moving from analog to digital. Uh, Robin, I'm going to pass it off to you. Thanks, Josh. So um, just to take a moment to introduce you to Josh, he does all the wonderful graphics here at Hapara. Aren't we so lucky? He does such a beautiful job. The work that he's um, that you see here in, in this uh, deck, uh, slide deck, and other ones as well on webinars, he, he does. So thank you so much, Josh. Okay, so uh, as Josh said, we're gonna take a walk uh, uh, to take a look at high level views of classroom workflows and moving from face to face and paper, which I call analog here, to a digital experience. So I am Robin Poncia, as Josh introduced. I have been an educator. I've been a guidance counselor, school principal, I own tech company for many, many years. Um, and now I work for Hapara. In my spare time, uh, I volunteer with a lot of nonprofit children's causes. So our agenda today, first off, I'd like to just establish that um, I want you to feel safe and I want you to feel safe to ask questions. And I want you to feel um, like to, so that you're learning what you need to learn. And, uh, and I want to encourage you during this time and just uh, to reach out and ask what you need um, during our presentation. Uh, Josh will be watching the questions while I'm presenting and I've invited him to interrupt um, and to ask whatever needs to be clarified while I'm presenting. So thank you. So please feel free to ask away. Next, um, the meat of my presentation is going to be reviewing and discussing the workflow crosswalks between face-to-face -face and paper task and their digital counterparts and how technology can help. Um, hopefully make, it, make your teaching time more effective and to hopefully freeing you up um, with some time. And then I'm going to share lots of resources. So now is the time. Now is the time to adopt technology in your teaching workflows, um, if, if you haven't already. Um, you, have you ever been in a situation where you didn't learn something when it was being taught? Then as time went on, it was more difficult to speak up to say you hadn't learned it yet. I have been in that situation. I still have nightmares to this day about a university calculus class I ended up in. And I, you know, the first few chapters were fine and then the material was getting, you know, so I wasn't, didn't understand it. And I didn't raise my hand and I didn't ask questions. <laughs> and I was lost from that point forward. Of course, the lessons then built upon previous learning that I had not mastered. And I just felt, like it was too late to raise my hand and then like, hang on just a second. I didn't understand this part back there. Well, you may feel like you're in this same situation with the adoption of technology in your uh, teacher workflows. And, um, and now you're faced with delivering um, teaching and learning online because of uh, COVID and the pandemic and school closures. Well, now is the time to learn that technology can help you connect with your students and hopefully be more efficient and have positive impact on student learning outcomes and relationships. And I hope that you're going to be pleased that teaching um, and with technology can mirror the best practices of what you already had in place as a part of your classroom. So most of us are now thrown into this virtual scenario with no choice and maybe a bit lost with how all of these like little bits of technology that you've adopted, how they can all fit into learning uh, from a distance. Well, let's start by identifying some of the benefits of tech 
uh, technology can promote not just a reduction of paper and other physical resources, but rather a more efficient workflow, quicker communication, improved access to learning materials, and seamless digital resources. Uh, personalized learning plans are easier to create and deliver. Paperless classrooms can aid with curriculum refinement too. Uh, while this is normally a dreaded and time-consuming task of updating paper teaching materials, tech can help with that. Digital tools and the cloud in particular make this process way more efficient. And you can access on-demand anytime from anywhere. Technology can improve curricula, uh, collaboration and communication. If leveraged with learning in mind, and I'm gonna say that part again, if leveraged with learning in mind, it can improve student outcomes. But you just can't substitute a Google Doc for a worksheet. A worksheet alone didn't create deep learning, did it? And it's the same thing with tech. A Google Doc alone isn't going to do that either. Basically, your classroom exists in the cloud now. And when you return to a brick and mortar school, your classroom will exist face-to-face -face as well as cloud-based when you get back. Okay, this is uh, from the McKinsey Institute, and they recently released a global teacher and student surveyed sourcing respondents from Canada, the United States, Singapore, and the United Kingdom. Surprise, surprise, teachers work more than 40 hours a week. No one on this call is surprised by that information, I guarantee. Even more revealing though, is the classroom bound teachers only spend 49% of their teaching time in direct interaction with students. The remaining 51% is consumed by non-teaching activities. Done right, technology can increase our time interacting and educating. Now, uh, take a look at this chart. The blue sections are the student-facing um, um, and interaction tasks and engagement tasks, and the gray and black sections are the non-student um, contact times. I would actually challenge this. Um, I believe that evaluation and feedback, um, a good chunk of that could be student-facing and should be student-facing. Um, we do it every day with our formative feedback verbally to kids, um, but we're going to talk a bit about that as it pertains to how that's done in technology. So overall in this chart, there are no real surprises here, but one thing um, that I do want to point out is that Papara is adamant about the technology should enhance your workflows and thereby increase uh, your learning engagement time and hopefully making um, that time with students more effective and to have more learning impact. So let me show you what I mean. Teacher workflows. Okay, I've already used this term several times. Uh, by workflow, I mean it's like your daily routines. It's all of the pieces of the routine and how they all work together. I guess a teacher would uh, use it, well, my program. Well, in my program, I do it this way. So think about all those maybe little tech tools that you've been adopted, that you've already adopted, that you feel comfortable with. Like, for example, um, I know a lot of teachers um, that use Apara, also use Seesaw or Pear Deck. Those are great tools, uh, but not a whole program do they make. Uh, you need to have a home base, something that brings together all of the pieces of your program. And we believe that G Suite and Apara together do this. So uh, in talking about teacher workflows today, I really want to emphasize the pedagogical pieces of the workflow um, in each of these aspects, lesson planning, monitoring student research, delivering learning, differentiating learning, planning for collaboration, and providing formative feedback. You know, some of these things you may say, uh, monitoring a Chromebook, how is that pedagogical? Well, at Hapara, this is a really important um, aspect of our monitoring tool. We believe um, that 
you know, that monitoring experience should be an instructional one. And I'll talk a little bit more about this as we go on. Okay, some of the biggest um, time savings, according to the McKinsey report that I cited, um, could be used with um, existing technology for lesson planning. And across those four countries, and that McKinsey report interviewed 2,000 teachers, teachers spent an average of 11 hours a week in preparing activities. Their estimation was that effective use of technology could cut the time to just six hours. They cited that even if teachers spend the same amount of time preparing, technology uh, could make that time more effective, helping them come up with even better lessons and approaches. So here we're seeing Hapara workspaces. Um, there are thousands of publicly shared workspaces. And I mean, it's, it's mind boggling when I start, I could be lost in these workspaces. Um, they just amaze me, uh, some of them. And the work that teachers have done, putting images with the cards and how they've broken out activities based on groups, just, I'm so humbled and inspired by their work. Um, so you can search by grade and subject on the Discover tab in Workspace. And um, you can, <laughs> I would encourage you to choose a range of grades there. And when you find one you like, you can copy it. When a teacher makes it public, they know that other teachers are going to value it and make a copy of it and use it in their classroom. And after you copy it, you can edit it so it matches your students, your teaching style, and your state standards. So as I go through this, I want to make sure I'm, I don't really plan on doing a deep dive in any one product. I want to let you know that I'm going to skip through each of these um, aspects from all of our product base and I've added the resources for you to take a deep dive um, on your own time in my resources later on. So uh, now getting back to our uh, thing here, my, our webinar, uh, monitoring student research. So monitoring students in the classroom as they do research on Chromebooks using G Suite in a face-to-face -face environment without technology's tools is hard to do. That second that Chromebook is opened, you can't see what's on their screen or all the screens, no matter how hard or fast you circulate around your classroom. I did a classroom visit one time where they used four cameras in the in the classroom that then fed teaching large monitor tv monitors uh, to monitor classrooms uh, to chromebooks this was a really expensive solution and not very practical especially now that um, remote learning is happening so monitoring students while they are learning is a part of of student engagement time Highlights allows teachers to quickly scan all active screens that students have opened. This reduces your time significantly and allows you to give feedback in a timely fashion in the moment. Now, I do want to pause right now and take time to talk about the use of highlights in a remote learning situation. The teachers on staff here at APARA um, have you know the same mindset is like okay don't drive yourself crazy trying to monitor screens while students are remote um, you will it's it's just not practical having everybody together um, at the same time learning I would also challenge isn't really practical either we've heard so many scenarios where you know, older kids have to babysit younger kids while their parents are working from home. And, you know, there's also access issues. Uh, so, um, you know, so Highlights is a wonderful tool. It's a wonderful instructional tool. Um, and, but just be, just be very thoughtful about how you're using it this time while there's remote learning. A really great example is you might want to do a focus browsing session 
or schedule the push out of a website uh, for a mini lesson that you're that you're meeting a group of students with. Those are excellent uses of highlights during this time. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about using highlights in a face-to-face -face classroom scenario. Um, you can group students in highlights. For example, you might have a group, um, I'm just going to use the term chatty Cathy's and I apologize if anybody's name is Cathy, but you might want to group, you know, a group of students who maybe you want to keep a closer eye on those screens or you might want to look at the history after class in snaps, for example. Just make sure you're using your time to teach, guide, and engage students, not just sit behind your desk closing tabs on students' screens. So now, um, uh, going back to the McKinsey report, they say implementing technology in the classroom at scale is hard. Well, I think we would all agree with that too. Just providing har har uh, the hardware is easy uh, if you have a budget for it. Integrating effective software that links student learning goals with the curriculum and then training teachers on how to adopt that is difficult. To improve student outcomes, the teacher still needs to be in the classroom, but their role will shift from instructor to facilitator and coach. Now that is even more so true in a remote learning scenario. And Workspace helps you do that. You move from sage on the stage to the guide on the side. Uh, you've laid out your learning path here in workspaces. You still need to meet with your students to problem solve and to make sure they are connected to the learning, to have check-ins. You still meet, but your role will shift. You've given them the ability to pursue learning without you having to deliver one lesson for all. And it's a wonderful place to empower learners to pursue uh, the learning. So now I'm um, talking about assessing learning. Evaluation and feedback complete the teaching loop. As teachers understand what their students know and can do, they can then prepare for the next lesson. We've all had stacks of papers to grade. In fact, I grew up my mom grading papers. My mom was a typing teacher and she would bring home stacks of papers every night. And my job was, I was seven years old and I had a red pen and I had to circle every time they used white out in their typing. <laughs> so I grew up with a stack of grading papers starting at seven years old. Teacher dashboard really saves time with that grading process and that feedback process. It allows you to view and access learner work. It provides uh, feedback. It provides the ability to give feedback uh, and communicate with learners. And to me, I'm sorry, every webinar I do, I go on this rant about formative feedback, but it is one of the most powerful tools a teacher has in their tool chest and with the greatest ability to impact learning. Um, right now in the remote learning scenario, use it more than anything else. That's what I would be really focusing on. Don't focus on grades as much as you are helping them with the learning process and giving them feedback about, about that. Um, uh, Okay, uh, teacher dashboard also allows you to differentiate with dashboard groups. And like I said before, you can push out different documents to different learners based on those groupings. You can share resources with SmartShare. You can digitally push out a doc to an individual student, a group, or a whole class. All right, um, so, here we go, differentiating instruction. I'm just gonna drop another little truth bomb here. Differentiation is a time consuming and it's hard to fit into a day. Now in the face-to-face -face environment, we just naturally did that. We, you know, as you're presenting, uh, you know, and talking with a group of learners, you may have leaned over to one or two on the side and, you know, adjusted what you're saying or you scaffold your remarks to help, to help in this part. 
However, um, to do this in an intentional way online and scaffolding every lesson, every unit is hard. Okay, this is one of the key strengths of APARA. Workspace easily allows you to create groups down to the individual and copy cards and deliver the learning to students. So what they see, they each have their own stream, um, their own view that, um, you know, down to the individual, they don't know that each other may have different assignments. You may have some of the cards where all students receive them and other cards where you've added activities that only certain learners receive. Highlights, our monitoring tool, allows you to group students. Like I said about the Chatty Cathy's, maybe all in one group, so you can monitor them a little more closely and it allows others more freedom. Maybe you monitor different groups on different days. Maybe you monitor all the students all the same. In any of these scenarios, highlights allow you to quickly, uh, to, uh, you to group students quickly and easily. Student dashboard. Uh, now, this is a new tool for Hapara. We are so excited about this tool. It's already released in the Southern Hemisphere. It's released in the Northern Hemisphere to our beta customers who worked with us on development. But also, if your school is interested in adopting student dashboard, uh, please get in touch. Um, we would love to take you, we would love to enable this uh, part of the product for you. Uh, you'll need to work through your tech admin on this, but it is such an exciting product. Um, this is a student facing tool, so a teacher doesn't really see this. And it's where it streams all assignment notifications, all messages, all due dates, all shared docs from Google Classroom and Hapara and soon other LMSs uh, in order for the student to organize by due dates versus when it was streamed to the student. This is a really great differentiator to me in learning for a student. All of that noise, all of those messages are all streamlined in an orderly fashion and delivered in a way where a student knows what is due when. Each student sees only the information that's pertinent to them based on their due dates. Now I want you to think about all of that chasing down of assignments and the organization of agendas. That students have their parents sign and then they leave it on the breakfast table. My children have done that so many days. Uh, no more of this. It's all accessible to students on their cells. Their, their Chromebooks, anywhere they can log in with their student account, their student assigned school accounts. Uh, we worked with students in three countries to hear about how they kept their learning organized. And did they use Google Classroom and receive notification that way? Did they have a paper journal? Did their teacher write it on the chalkboard and they were responsible? And it was fascinating. They had so much to say about this. Every teacher used something different, even in the same school. And you know that's the case. Um, I've seen it in the schools where I taught, where every teacher had their own way of managing this. Think about that standing in a student's shoes. How, um, how, you, how lost a student felt. And we, we interviewed them and asked them, so how did you plan for that? How do you keep up with your homework? Well, I talked to the most organized person in the class and then they tell me what's due when. <laughs> it was like, wow. So um, that was, uh, it was, that was such a, a insightful, fun thing to do to talk with those kids and to learn about what their um, experience was, and that's how Student Dashboard came about. A student design tool to make learning more organized. Planning for collaboration. Okay, group work. It's even more important in a digital setting. I know that's, you know, we're so afraid of what are they going to do um, when they're working together but students still need to socialize. They need it more than ever. They still need to work with others. And they also still need structure.
So technology uh, needs to assist you to group students for collaboration, to allow you to view the group activity and to message students to help keep them on track. Teachers collaborating uh, with teachers is even more important as well. Uh, do you co-teach with a group of, of um, students? Like for example, I know our Ashley Newman last week talked about her experiences that co-teaching with a group of teachers um, where they all serve the same learners. This is even more important to stay connected to each other and to deliver seamless um, learning for students. Uh, so, for example, let's take that example. If you taught in middle school and you all jointly planned a project-based learning unit, uh, does your technology give you the ability to all join the same unit and to see and interact with student work and access their docs? Well, Hapar Workspace does. Think about a teacher librarian and a classroom teacher working on project-based learning uh, project together. Those are things that um, I really get excited about and that technology should not isolate us from each other. It should enable us to work together. Finding formative feedback. Okay, I went on my little rant about formative feedback earlier, but I'm just going to reiterate it. Formative feedback is one of the most powerful actions and tools a teacher can do to impact student learning. Dashboard, highlights, workspace are built specifically so a teacher can give students formative feedback. This is the point where you have the most uh, the ability um, to, for mastery learning more so than any other time, not when you assign a final grade. The learning doesn't happen from that assignment of a summative grade. The learning happens during the process of, of skill acquisition. As I mentioned earlier, Teacher Dashboard is a bird's eye view of every student's drive, blog, sites, and email. You can see here in this GIF where um, here's the view of Teacher Dashboard. Every document in a student's drive, pop right in there, and then you know, you're giving comment um, on their work. See, comment, and now you're coming in and giving that formative feedback right there in the moment. How great is that? So here's our teaching workflow with Hapara and how Hapara manages access to Google Classroom and G Suite productivity tools to give teachers and students the ability to make their existing work, to take their existing workflows to the cloud. So, next. So, what could your day look like working with technology and delivering your learning? Hopefully, it will give you back some time for you to spend on yourself, uh, to spend with your families, and uh, hopefully some of that time could be also plowed back into improving your program through a more personalized, differentiated learning and more direct coaching, more formative feedback, and more mentoring of your students. In the McKinsey survey, about one third of teachers said they wanted to personalize learning. Um, but they did not feel like they were doing so effectively at the present. Their biggest barriers were time, resources, materials, and technology. I've seen how Hapara does this and how other educators leverage it to make their teaching time more effective, efficient, and impactful. So um, now I've just done a quick little um, uh, doc here where uh, what a day may look like in a remote learning scenario. I know Amy Miller also used this in her webinar and I don't want to go into it in detail here but I did want to show you how taking that from direct instruction to being more of that guide on the side and what your time may look like and how you're using your time differently. So you'll receive um, uh, this uh, um, uh, in, uh, this uh, slide deck in uh, as a follow up. So please um, feel free to take a look at it closer then. 
and if you you see on through here um, the rest of the day. So please take us uh, the time to, if you like, um, follow through and click through it um, when you receive the webinar and the slide deck. So I wanted to now take some time going forward. So where to from here? Um, I wanted to promote these amazing webinars that were done recently that I really think are next steps. So what I talked about today and uh, first one, st um, stop number one for you is to watch Ashley Newman's amazing uh, her teacher's tips for our power workspaces at home. Such a sweet, sweet young lady and a beautiful, supportive, encouraging presentation. And she just makes you feel like you can do it. And so I wanted you to have access to this. Next, Beth still gives us um, a distance educator's uh, uh, advice for taking teaching and learning uh, uh, from home now and best practices for that. Beth taught for many years in a distance learning um, environment. And so we, she brought to us some amazing tips for how to set up your practice from home. And then Amy Miller, the amazing Amy Miller, as we call her, uh, then builds on Beth's program or Beth's webinar and provides more details and some really great resources to go there. So do all three of these and do them in this order is the way I think you should uh, be looking at this. So next steps. I'm gonna encourage you if you're just adopting technology and program or you've been using it for a while, choose two or three workflows that you want to take digital or you want to increase um, how you're using technology to help leverage deep learning. Remember, what was good learning offline, you have to find how to make that good learning online. And you can do it and it is doable. And um, don't just substitute out. If it's not deep learning, um, you know, don't make that step. Just just do the, the one thing, uh, just choose one or two things that you feel confident in that you feel like is really reflecting the deep learning. Maybe experiment at first. Kids are really forgiving if you tell them that you're trying to learn. And I know there was a comment in the community. Um, so many educators are saying, well, I just tell my kids that I'm a lifelong learner and that, you know, it's so I'm showing you that I make mistakes too. And I think that's really good advice. Speaking of community, you need to join that community. I'm telling you, I, I learn something new every time I log in there. And I log in several times a day and I read what teachers are posting from all over the world. It is going to give you such a, a global perspective of education. But what you're going to see, there's so many common threads. We just all care about kids. We care about our practice and everybody's asking questions and everybody's learning and it's a safe place to go in and ask. You will be just um, inspired and you will feel supported by those amazing people in that community. Ask questions. And also, even if you don't know technology, answer questions. Remember, you know your practice, you know um, what deep, what, um, quality learning looks like and what higher order thinking skills look like and engagement and learning and the flow in learning. You know that part already. So go in and answer questions around that. Um, exchange ideas. And just remember, we're in this together. You have so much support here at Papara. Um, no matter where you turn, you have people ready to help you. There are so many fellow teachers there in the community that I just can't wait for you to connect with if you haven't already. Um, so here we go. This is your homework to just choose two or three little workflows that you want to take digital or do one thing um, and just experiment with it. And then jump in that community and tell us what you're doing. I would love to hear um, what your journey is. You know, here at Apara, we have this saying, um, and it really has developed our practice. You know, if, if we believe that learning is a journey for our students, well, the same holds true for us as teachers. 
and we're different we're at different points in our learning um, with adoption of technology, in our in our teaching practice, in our understanding of pedagogy and how to get to that deep learning. We're all on a journey with that. And I think teachers <laughs> become teachers because they are lifelong learners. So um, if you don't currently uh, have um, uh, Hapara, you know, it's. I uh, just wanted to say you do need to purchase at the. Well, it's, it's free of charge until the end of June. Um, this does need to be from a school scenario or a district scenario. Individual teachers just can't use Hapara, but uh, you know, maybe connect the tech admin or a decision maker at your school level uh, with somebody at Hapara, and they'll be glad to help. Uh, uh, then see what hopefully you're seeing in Hapara that's of interest to you. Now I'm just going to quickly go through. Um, here's a look of our Hapara community. Again, jump in there. There's about 3,000 other teachers. I guarantee you there are fine arts teachers. We see amazing posts for our friend Rebecca in Oakland, and, and we also have people from Singapore who are fine arts teachers in there. And they're just from all over the world, and I just can't say enough about the wonderful people in there. Uh, next. Um, in our community, our amazing Erin Harding here on staff, um, product manager, um, is has uh, started with developing HAPAR courses, and now our Lindsay Dixon and others are working for, there's a whole section of free courses to get you started with using HAPARA inside the community. Just look on the left sidebar and you'll see it right there. Okay, HAPARA champions, can't say enough about our HAPARA champions. Um, they are, uh, they are, aspirational to me. They come into our booth at events and we just scream with delight and give them big hugs because um, they're just a part of our family. Um, and uh, we learn so much from them um, and they are they are truly our ambassadors. And, um, and I can't say enough about the Sapar Champion Program. Our wonderful Beth Still, along with Randy Fairfield, Scott Lewis and others, uh, Lindy Hockenberry, if you don't know Lindy, wow, wait till you get to a Par Champion Trainer. These are amazing people. Um, this program is about 15 hours to compete, complete. Um, you'll walk away with a deeper understanding. Um, we've had people say to us, it changed my teaching practice. Uh, so this program is free to any Hapara uh, uh, teacher. And so please jump in. I think this round of APARA Champion Educators, I think we have a hundred and we run these courses every couple of weeks, every three or four weeks, I believe. So that's a big group this time. Also, APARA support, easily find. You can go to the support section of the APARA website and ask any questions. The support will help you anytime you need to for any of those. We also have our amazing professional learning folks, Beth Still and Amy Miller. You write professional learning at hapara.com, they will answer your questions. You write community at hapara.com, we will answer your questions. We're here to take care of you. And now this part of the slide deck, I have about <laughs> you know 20 more slides with tons of resources around each of our products. So Anyway, uh, I won't flip through them all, but um, they are, they're all there, okay? And with, with tons, of, uh, tons of webinars, tons of PDFs, tons of links to blogs, so many things there. So I'm pretty much wrapped up with what I need to say. I need to find out if any questions came through, Josh. Yeah, there were a few questions that came in. Let me open them up here. Um, one of them was, how seamless is Workspace in Google Classroom? Okay, so you broke up just a little bit, but I'm going to say the question back to you. Um, how seamless does oh. uh, Workspace and Google Classroom work together? Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. They work really well together. In fact, they are like hand-in-glove kind of fit. Um, 
in the additional resources, you're going to see several resources around just this, um, around that relationship of Google Classroom plus Hapara uh, uh, workspace. Um, think about it as so many people use Google Classroom for that like announcement and notification stream. Um, and uh, and then they use Hapara Workspace to organize learning, um, as you saw in there, very much a more um, uh, uh, a layout of learning where students can easily see the big picture of everything you want them to do. Uh, and so that's why we feel like they fit so well together. And so uh, make sure when you receive this the slide deck to go down and look specifically for those resources. All right, yeah, and another question we received here is, um, how does Sapara work with tools like Newzella? And I think the question generally is just asking, what are some kind of uh, other tools that would integrate well with Workspace? That is a wonderful question. Okay, so one of the things about Workspace is you create these cards. Well, you can put a link to anything on the web inside these cards, okay? And then you choose which groups you want to serve that card to. You may want to do it as the whole class, or you may want to, you know, have your, you know, your ELL students in um, uh, to have certain resources and, you know, other students to have others. You may divide up your resources based on interest. So, you know, tools like Newzella, um, which have some wonderful content, um, you can uh, put as an activity in um, a card in Workspace. There's so many, I see a lot of Flipgrid, I see a lot of Seesaw, I see a lot of, of um, uh, Pear Deck as well, uh, embedded in Workspaces. Ashley Newman does such a beautiful job in her webinar where she talks about how she gets, foreshadows the learning of what's going to happen in a card and how she uses, like if she uses Flipgrid um, activity in a card, she'll put the Flipgrid little logo on the top of the card, on the image header of the card. And so that way the students, there's already an anticipatory set of uh, what kind of activity is going to be happening in that card. So yes, Easily, easily done. If you have a link to something, you can embed it in a card and, and serve it out to students via Workspace. Awesome. And the final question here is more just, uh, will there be a replay available? Yes, the replay will be available. <laughs> you guys will receive an email uh, with the link to the replay and any resources that Robin has mentioned here. Yes, that we have we have a game with that. We get asked if there's going to be a recording sent out after webinars. <laughs> uh, you can imagine the game. <laughs> so yes, you will get it after all of our Hapara webinars. We always send out a recording uh, with any of the resources. So uh, so and that's all, right, Josh? Yep, that was the last question. Right, and so I just wanted to say thank you for coming. I want you to feel supported. I want you to feel like you can ask questions. I want you to feel like there's a whole thing, not, not just employees at Hapara, but I'm saying other Hapara um, customers that are teachers in the community, they're, they're so helpful. It's just a part of our culture and um, to be encouraging and supportive. Um, and, um, and so I want to meet you in the community. So please, Jump in there, join the community, and let us help you. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone.